Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I'm getting ready to go up to the pool here in a couple minutes, but I wanted to film a couple videos before I did. So I thought that I would break out the meditation books and we would see what Melody Beatty has to say to us today. So for those of you that are new over here, <laughs> is anybody new over here? I uh, The two Melody Beatty books that I read from are The Language of Letting Go, which is a sister book to Codependent No More. It's daily affirmations and meditation meditations. The second one is Journey to the Heart. And I love these. These are my two favorite daily affirmation books of life. Okay, so let's get into this. Today is June 3rd, my new reading glasses that I showed over on my Peter Dustup channel. Let's see what the language of letting go has to say to us today. June 3rd. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Charity. Um, let's go to June 2nd, yesterday. It says owning our power. I want to read about that. Okay, owning our power. We don't have to give others so much power and ourselves so little. We don't have to give others so much credit and ourselves so little. In recovery from codependency, we learn there's a big difference between humility and discounting ourselves. When others act irresponsibly and attempt to blame their problems on us, we no longer feel guilty. We let them face their own consequences. Man, that's so hard. When others talk nonsense, we don't question our own thinking. When others try to manipulate or exploit us, we know it's okay to feel anger and distrust and to say no to the plan. When others tell us that we want something that we finally, that we really don't want, or someone tells us that we don't want something that we really do want, we trust ourselves. When others tell us things we don't believe, we know it's okay to trust our instincts. We can even change our mind later. We don't have to give up our personal power to anyone, strangers, friends, spouses, children, authority figures, or those over whom we're in authority. People may have things to teach us. They may have more information than we have and may appear more confident or forceful than we feel. But we are equals. Our magic is not in them. Our magic, our light, is in us. And it is as bright as light, light as theirs. We are not second-class citizens. By owning our power, we don't have to become aggressive or controlling. We don't have to discount others, but we don't discount ourselves either. Today, I will own my power with people. I will let myself know what I know, feel what I feel, believe what I believe, and see what I see. I will be open to changing and learning from others and experience, but I will trust and validate myself too. I will stand in my own truth. Okay, this is such an important meditation, and like I literally was getting chills as I started to read this. So I want to read the first paragraph over to you guys, okay? Because I'm going to talk specifically mostly about this. We don't have to give others so much power and ourselves so little. We don't have to give others so much credit and ourselves so little. In recovery from codependency, we learn there's a big difference between humility and discounting ourselves. And I think that's such a powerful statement, you know? And and I think that when we talk about recovery from codependency, that looks a lot of different ways for a lot of different people, okay? That looks like standing up for yourself. That looks like challenging things that you don't agree with. That looks like telling people what boundaries you have. That means setting uh, appropriate and healthy boundaries for yourself. And what's interesting to me through the years, right, is that Often, I will have, well, you know, my life, my circle is so small today. I mean, I have a few friends and, um, you know, my family and things like that. And I would say that today in my life, almost everybody respects my boundaries on a regular basis. I don't feel like I have any people in my life, in my personal circle today, that are unhealthy for me, right? That was not always the case. But I can remember when I first started setting boundaries and limits for myself. And, you know, like somebody would say something and... um you know, somebody would kind of, like, put me down or whatever, like, in a joking way. And it would, like, make me feel some kind of way. Like, it would hurt my feelings. And I can remember when I started standing up for myself, like, 10 years. I mean, you know, I went through my standing up for myself era on YouTube. But, like, I'm talking, like, 10, 15 years ago, right? And I would start standing up for myself. Or when I, like, I would have friends that would, like, every time they called me, all they did was talk about themselves. And they would never ask me anything about that about me, right? I mean, I'm talking, like six to eight phone calls in a row. Never once ever like, how's Alex? How are the dogs? How are you? Anything going on with you? Right? Never. It's just always like, oh my God, let me tell you what's going on, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden they'd be like, oh, I got I'm getting another call. I got to go. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like this idea of like, well, I'm an option. <laughs> I was convenient for you in that moment. And I remember when I said to a friend of mine, who's no longer in my life today, that did this to me a lot. I remember when I said one time, you know, it's interesting to me because every time you call me, you always go on and on and on about your life, but like you never ask me anything about 
about me whatsoever, right? Like you, I don't, you couldn't tell me anything that's going on in my life, you know? And I, I really thought that we were close and I thought the response that I would get would be like, oh my God, I'm so, because if I, if somebody said that to me, I would say, oh my God, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. I wasn't even aware of it. Like I must be so selfish minded that I wasn't even aware of that. Like I will do such a better job in the future, right? Because that's how my friends and I speak to each other today. You know, we're not perfect friends. Like, every once in a while, I might have to say to somebody or they might have to say to me, like, hey, like, can you watch this a little bit? Or, you know, can you be careful with, you know, whatever? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings or whatever. And they'll, you know, say the same thing to me and things like that. That's the language that friends and people that love you speak, okay? They're willing to, to change and take a look at who they are in their relationship with you. That wasn't what I got in this situation. What I got was a lot of gaslighting and this person turning on me. What do you mean I never ask about you? I ask about you all the time. I'm like, mm, no, you don't. Well, what happened was when I challenged them, then I became the asshole in the situation, right? Now... The first time, and that, that's the very first like situation in my life where I ever really stood up for myself, right? And I can remember the phone call because it was like 40 minutes and they went on and on and on. And finally they were like, well, I got to go. And I said, you know, you never asked me anything about myself. Like, it's kind of hurtful. Like, I have all these phone calls with you and I know that, you know, you're going through tough times. And let me just, t on a per perspective of what their tough times are like, it wasn't like they were going through traumatic experiences. They were going through what I think most of us go through on a regular basis, but they were catastrophizing it, always. Like, they were always living in catastrophe, right? You know, I'd said to them on new, numerous occasions, I think it would be great for you to have a therapist. I think it would be great for you to have somebody to talk to. I've been there for them, whatever. But that one time that I said to them, you know, I, I, like you never asked me anything about me. It kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. That's exactly like how I said it. I was very like, you know, kind of like, mm -hmm, you know, <laughs> like a dog begging for a treat kind of thing. And when they turned it on me and all of a sudden I was the villain in the situation, I started questioning myself. Like I started questioning my worth. Like, well, maybe I should just be their friend, you know, like, don't you know I'm going through a hard time? Like this isn't always, it's not always about you, Peter. And I'm thinking it hasn't been about me for two years. <laughs> never once has it ever been about me. And I've actually never called you and ever unloaded on you. You, like you know that you've done like somebody asked me the other day about like you know trauma dumping like that's what this person was doing to me right and but then I started feeling bad because I thought well no they're your friend and you should be there for them and stuff like that that should have been the first sign to me okay I'm telling you right now that should have been the biggest red fla flag to me that should have been the biggest sign to me that no friend would act that way a friend would say I'm sorry that I treat you that way let me work on it let me be better friend to yours because it means so much to me when I call you and you're there for me let me be there for you that's what a friend should say that's not what I got from many people that I started standing up for myself because I was in recovery from codependency. I didn't even realize it at the time. I just thought I was leaning into confidence, trying to work on myself, trying to stand up to things and whatever, right? Every encounter that I had with any person that I stood up to, especially when I said things to people like, I don't like that you speak to me that way, or I don't like the language that you speak, I don't like that word that you're using with me. What are you talking about? I'm just joking with you. It's not funny to me. I take that word very seriously, or I, I don't think this is funny. I don't think it's that, you know, this, this joke that you're making, it's not funny to me, right? Like, I am very serious about setting the grounds with that today. Like, I, I, if somebody says something to me, and I'm like, mm, no, you're not going to use that word with me, and if you're not aware that that word is like, I don't like it. Like I'm educating you now. Well, the same thing happened the first couple times that I said that to people. What are you talking about? I'm just joking with you. Like, can't you take a joke? And then I thought, can't you take a joke? Like they're, they're your friends. They care about you. Right. But what happened was I started saying it like, and then I would just like, I would go back into my shell and then I would take it for another couple months. Right. And then I'd stand up again. And every time that was a deflection tactic. Right. Like, it was always me. I was always the issue. I'm not the issue. I'll never forget sitting down with my friend Tanya Jean talking to her about a friend of mine one time. And she said to me, I said, either I'm crazy or they're crazy. And she goes, you're not crazy. She goes, you've been dealing with crazy for a very long time. She goes, it's time for you just to cut this off cleanly. She goes, they've shown you who they are. I know that today, right? If I, in a very sweet, gentle way, ask for somebody to just treat me a certain way, like that's not a lot to ask for in this world, right? To be treated correctly, that's not a lot to ask for in this world. To have people that we love or that we think love us, treat us well, speak to us with correct language, 
speak to us with nice language. I'm not talking about, like I did a video the other day about being direct and being kind. I'm not talking about that. I can handle that, okay? I'm talking about people that waste your time, that don't care about you, never ask about you, put you down and directly to your face, and we keep in our lives. And I had to start asking myself because I had a lot of people like that. I was like, what am I doing here? There's like three or four people that really want to spend time with me, and I'm wasting all my time with these people over here. I would rather spend all of my time with, let's say, one, two, or three people in my life than spend my time with like six to eight people over here that don't give a shit about me. And I know I don't usually cuss on this channel, but that's how I feel. That's how I felt that moment, you know? They don't speak to me correctly. I've had to bring this to them several times, and they don't respect me. And that's what this whole meditation is about, right? It's about respecting ourselves, is about saying, I respect myself enough to say, you're not going to speak to me that way. You're not going to waste my time, okay? Relationships are give and take. Sometimes you're going to give more than at other times. But it shouldn't be 95-5 and you be on the receiving end of 5% of that, you know, where you don't ever get anything. That shouldn't be it, right? Like, it should be, you know, um, I, I know when I say that, that just was... <laughs> A little nod to my drama channel and I meant it in no way whatsoever like that. But you know, like, um, it should never be like that. Like, friendships to some degree should be, most of the time, 50-50, 60-40, even 70-30 at times. So they should go, ebb and flow, right? And people, we should have the right to say, I don't want my friends and people that love me in my life to speak to me in ways that make my feelings hurt. Like, okay, there's enough people out there that do that to me that are not in my life. I don't want people in my life that I think that love me to speak to me that way and make jokes about me that I don't think are funny, you know? Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's interesting to me because I just watched the movie on Golden Pond for Peter's Movie Club over on my Peter Dustoff channel. And in there, like, her dad, his kind of, like, endearing word that he would call her when she was growing up was like his like he called her something like his chubby little girl or something well she's lived with that her whole life right because she has felt the the feelings of those words other people don't know sometimes what words do to us until we stand up and we say i don't like those words those words are not funny they're not cute to me they're not endearing right but once we say it we shouldn't have to say it 10 times as a reminder well, the reason why that first conversation to me was a teaching lesson was because I had many conversations with many people after that where I would stand up for myself in one way or the other or say, I don't want to be spoken to this way or you hurt my feelings with this, right? And every time it was always turned back on me with the exception of the people that remain in my life today. And that's and this is a good judge of how people enter my life today. I don't allow people to speak to me. I had a friend of mine that said to me way back in the day, she was talking about her husband and she said, her husband said something to her and she said, you must not think very highly of me to think it's okay to speak to me that way. And that is exactly exactly how I feel today. If you think it's okay to speak in a shitty way about me, then you must not think very highly of me. And if you don't think very highly of me, then you don't have access and privilege to being in my life on a regular basis. Because that is a privilege. Who we allow to spend, our, to spend time with us on a regular basis, that's a privilege. Who you spend time with, who you give your time and your energy to, that's a privilege that you're giving away. That's time that you're giving away. I'm not doing that for people in my life that don't respect me, and neither should you, you know? But I will tell you, all right? And I've had this conversation with my friend Tanya so much because she was really the one that started doing it first, and then I kind of took her lead, and I was like, no, I think there's people that I, I need to set some boundaries with. And when I started seeing it with her, the same thing happened to me, you know? Tanya, if she was sitting right here, she'd say, yeah, as soon as I started setting boundaries, people said I was a bitch. Well, the same thing happened. As soon as I started setting boundaries and telling people they weren't going to speak to me certain ways, I became an asshole. Oh, you can't handle it. You can't handle a joke. No, what I can't handle is people being disrespectful to my face that act like they're my friends and they love me. I'm not going to have it in my life, okay? Because if I can't depend on you in that moment, then when can I depend on you? You know? And I think everybody knows in the last couple years that I've gone through some pretty traumatic situations. It was eye-opening to me. Eye-opening to me, Okay? that who was there for me and who wasn't. And what I realized in that moment was, what I realized in those moments where a lot of people never reached out, never checked on me, I didn't know, I, some of them I still even have, right? Haven't heard from. What I realized in that moment was that I had banked on the right people. Because the people that I had been there for in the past were the ones that were there for me. The people that speak to me correctly and that I speak to them correctly and we love one another, they've been there for me and I've been there for them. And that's what it should be about, right? So if you ask for something in a relationship and somebody minimizes it, like this meditation was talking about, that's not about you, that's about them. And that should be a red flag that maybe it's time for that relationship to start ending. And that's just my experience, you know? Anyway, let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow.
拜。